what I'd like to do uh, in, in the next few minutes um, is really to tell you a little bit about some of the activities of ICGB uh, and, and really how those are linked directly uh, in, in terms of using biotechnology uh, and, and achieving the SDGs and basically using science for society. So as we've heard, we're an international organization. Uh, we have 66 member countries located throughout the world. Uh, and we have three research institutes. The headquarters is located in Trieste in Italy. And we also have labs in New Delhi and also in Cape Town. And so one of the, one of the sort of standout characteristics of ICGB is we're not like most international organizations uh, where we will be uh, largely dealing with regulatory or advisory issues. We actually also do the science that we're talking about. And so we basically came about as a, as a, as a, a decision um, to basically develop a centre uh, which was specifically dedicated towards training uh, and education and enhancement of capacity in the areas of molecular biology and biotechnology, specifically targeting the needs of our member states. And what I like to think of us is that we are basically using science for development. Uh, we have several instruments of action in which we do this. And what I'm going to do is cherry pick some of these to highlight how they connect to the SDGs. I like to think of as our approach as global. Um, we like to take a holistic approach to the SDGs. Um, and you'll see how this is actually reflected in our different programs. So there's the science. Uh, this is what we do in the labs. And this forms the basis of all of our activities. But we're not doing it in isolation. Uh, we do it directly in collaboration with our scientists, uh, with scientists from our member countries. So that's one of the key points, is partnerships um, based on science and also obviously on diplomacy. And this, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to go into details in science. I think we have, we're going to have lots of science later today. Uh, but it's just to emphasize that we are really truly international. And these are just some of the recent publications uh, from some of the groups uh, in ICGB. But if you look at the authorship of these publications, it's people from all over the world. And we have scientists from more than 40 different countries working in our laboratories. So these partnerships are fantastic. And it really helps foster understanding, obviously scientific collaboration, and, and also bringing new ideas. And I think new ideas is, is a centerpiece to uh, global partnerships. Obviously, when we come to specific SDGs themselves, uh, health is something that is really at the, one, of, one of the highest points of our agenda. And we have research groups working in a variety of different areas. Uh, infectious diseases, we're particularly proud of our activities in those areas. And we've built a wonderful partnership with Moldova recently during the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, ICGB has been providing assistance and, 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 and transfer of know-how in uh, aspects related to COVID-19 over the last few years. Non-communicable diseases is also a cornerstone of the work that we do uh, across all of the ICGB uh, laboratories with very strong groups working in the areas of cardiovascular research, cancer and gene therapies. If you have a healthy population, you need to be able to feed them. And so I think in the current global crisis, uh, uh, elements related to nutrition and accessibility to food is absolutely fundamental. And we're very proud that we have an extremely strong groups working in both New Delhi, Trieste, and in Cape Town on a whole variety of aspects related to agricultural research, ranging from the development of new strains of crops, uh, which have improved uh, disease resistance uh, or can grow in uh, more challenging uh, environmental uh, climates. And, and obviously with climate change, this is also an extremely important issue. Uh, just to give you one brief example of some of the sort of things we do, biofertilizers, for me, is one of the ways forward. 
we don't want to poison the cell soil with uh, toxic compounds and chemicals. Developing biofertilizers is something that we're really very actively involved in. And this is basically identifying communities of bacteria, natural communities of bacteria, which can help promote plant growth and help uh, generate uh, plant uh, resistance to various forms of disease. And we also work very closely with our member states in also helping them to take on some of the modern technologies that is associated uh, with some of these, uh, particularly with uh, aspects related to genetic engineering and modification and genome editing of uh, various plant strains. And we do this through various regulatory processes and offer advice to many of our countries. This is just an example of one such collaborative project that we had with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So as we've heard, uh, energy is a critical point. Uh, we're in a crisis, an energy crisis. And ICGB uh, has a very strong team um, in New Delhi, which has been supported directly by the Indian government through the Department of Biotechnology, specifically aiming to promote the development of uh, biofuels uh, and, and, and also connected to bioremediation and carbon capture. And they have developed a whole variety of different processes, which are now scaled up to industrial scale for the production of biofuels. And these technologies are all available for transfer directly to our member states. And I will be very happy to discuss with anybody uh, uh, who may be present today um, some of these technologies if there is an interest in, 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 in what we're developing in this area. Obviously, with the science, this forms the bedrock. And you can use this as a way to promote education. And I think we've just heard that education of our young people is absolutely fundamental going forward. Uh, it's, these are the future. These are the people who are going to really solve the problems as we go forward. And so we're very fortunate to have a wonderful uh, PhD and postdoctoral fellowship program. We support international fellowships between ICGB member countries. And so we're using this educational uh, platform, not just based on what we can provide, but what 66 member countries can provide. And we do many of these in collaborations. So for instance, this is a collaboration that we have with the uh, UN Technology Bank and TWAS, an educational program specifically targeted in least developed countries. We're in the business of helping support meetings and courses, just like this one. And again, I have to congratulate the organizers for what they've put together here. Uh, it's a, it, it, the program is fantastic. But as you can see from this slide, uh, we're very active in this area. We're supporting 27 such meetings in 19 different countries this year. Um, and it was a challenge, obviously, with the pandemic. But we're really, really happy that we're be now being able to get back together again and meet in person because this is really the way to go. Um, I'd just like also to highlight that many of these courses are recorded and they're all available on our website. So even if you can't make it in person, you can go to our website and really gain access to some amazing state-of-the-art presentations on a whole range of different subjects in the life sciences. Equality, this is absolutely fundamental as we go forward. And we have to satisfy a gender equality, but also provide equality in countries which have been left behind. And we do this in a whole variety of different ways. This is a program that we have for women, but women in, um, in the global south really trying to provide them with educational opportunities uh, within the ICGB network. And again, I come back to partnerships, that how we can achieve this. And we have a fantastic partnership with the Italian government and through the uh, Ministry for Foreign Affairs. And through this particular program, 
we, they have uh, been uh, in incredibly generous in supporting a program in the Horn of Africa. Again, providing fellowships, providing research funding to those labs, and also supporting international gatherings such as this one. Again, partnerships. This again is in Africa, but it's with the Standard and Trade Organization, but it's helping countries in the SADAC region reduce uh, pesticide levels within late season crops. And that's very important for these countries because they want to be able to export to Europe, and we want to be able to eat their food safely. And so helping them to reduce pesticide usage and, 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 and make those crops safe and accessible to markets benefits not only us, but it also benefits them. And finally, I'm going to come back to industry. And actually, in the process of ensuring that the fruits of biotechnology can actually get to the people who need it. This is absolutely fundamental. And you do this through direct technology transfer. And this is just an example of some of the products that we produce. So ICGB develops processes for production of a whole variety of different biotherapeutics. And why do we do that? Price. What we produce in the vast majority of cases is hundreds of times cheaper than what is available from Big Pharma. And I should stress that all of these products meet the highest standards of the European pharmacopoeia. So we're providing access to this technology to all of our member countries so that people in those countries can get access to these medicines. This is the facility. It was uh, very uh, generously supported by the Regione Friuli Venezia Giulia that helped build this uh, center and which offers a whole platform for technology transfer, for uh, quality control, and also obviously in a variety, a range of different production processes. That was high tech. There's also low tech. You should not forget low tech because that can also be literally low hanging fruit. And this is a project that we developed with New England Biolabs and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation using a very cheap diagnostic for COVID-19 in four countries in Africa, where basically access to all the modern diagnostics was really not possible at the early stages of the pandemic. This was an incredibly successful collaboration. It is now extended to a five further countries than member states in Africa. And the whole point here is to develop local production capabilities for diagnostics for a whole variety of different diseases in low resource environments. So I hope I've given you a, a, a feeling for what we're doing and how we're addressing the SDGs. All of these activities obviously all focus on reducing poverty and ensuring that everybody gains access to health, food, um, and education. And of course, through these networks, we reduce inequalities. We bring people together from across the world. And it's this bringing people together which helps strengthen our communities, our institutions, uh, and hopefully ensuring peace and stability.